Hey Vapors, I've got another build for you today. Uh, I'm going to be building the Aqua RTA or RBA, whichever you prefer. Uh, some call this the K Fun Killer. And uh, I just built one just a few minutes ago, and I can tell you that the vapor production is more than the K Fun. And uh, the flavor, I guess, is about the same. Maybe, maybe a little bit better. I don't know. About the same though. Uh, what makes this different than the K Fun is the con uh, the way the, the configuration of the posts. You have two posts: uh, a negative, or excuse me, this is a positive with the insulator around it, and then the uh, negative. But uh, some noticeable differences from the K-Fun, uh, for one, it doesn't have the block with the uh, center post screw coming through with the hole in it. Actually, this has two air holes and four juice veins in it. So uh, that provides a lot of good flavor. It's a dual coil. It's made for dual coils. Uh, so... You know, it produces a lot more flavor, or excuse me, vapor. Uh, so anyway, um, I've already got it apart. Here's your chimney, uh, your tank barrel with the, uh, the logo on it and a serial number. Uh, this is the top. And rather than put it back together and take it back apart, as I build it, I'm going to show you how it goes back together and how to adjust uh, one of the other differences from the K-Fun is the airflow uh, airflow are two holes here and the tank barrel screws over top of this and this is in the tank barrel you screw or unscrew it you screw it down or unscrew it to raise and lower the tank to uh, open or close these air holes okay so let me put this on my ohm meter here for a building base and I've got to wrap my coils and I want to tell you uh, before I start to wrap them in case I forget later you want to leave some uh, excess on your coil legs because what you're going to want to do is wrap the wire, the coil leg wires, around these posts. There's no post holes for it and there's no little teeny small screws. You want to leave a little excess so that you can grab the wire and wrap it around these posts. Okay. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some music on and start wrapping my coils. It's going to be 26 or 28 gauge Canthal, six wraps around a 1 8 inch bit, and it's going to come out to 0.6 ohms. There's one coil done. Working on my next coil. Now I'm going to position it while it's the coil is still on the drill bit and position it so I can wrap these wires and loosen up these screws a little bit so I can wrap these wires and you want the coil to basically sit over top of the air hole so you get one on there 
get one coil installed See these uh, post screws are still loose. So that's you got to leave both of them loose, before, or you got to leave them loose until you get uh, both coils on there with the wires wrapped around them. It looks like a hot mess in there, doesn't it? <laughs> so the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, tighten up the post screws or bolts, whatever, nuts. And I would recommend once you get it kind of finger tight, you'll probably want to use a pair of needle nose pliers or something to uh, make sure that they're good and snug. too tight though so that you strip out the threads but you do want them very snug and you see you got a, all these little spider legs Go ahead and trim off the excess of these legs. Okay, now we've got that done, we're going to finish positioning our coils now that the screws are tight. And basically want them in the center of the post. And you want them basically right above the air hole. Check for shorts, make sure they're not touching the, the uh, posts, the coils aren't touching the posts. Ok, 
Okay. It looked pretty good. Now I want to uh, check the ohms. To make sure. I always want to make sure that check your ohms. It'll let you know if you have a short or you're hitting your mark where you should be. 0.6. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's 0.6. Next we're going to pulse the coils. I like to pulse the coils for a couple of reasons. One of them being, uh, if you don't, a lot of times the uh, It'll make it taste metallic-y. They look pretty good. Okay, this one coil is sitting a little lower than the other. about the same now. Now normally I would just leave it on the mod and uh, wick, go ahead and put the wick in it, but the mod sets this up so high that uh, it's hard to see it in the camera. So I'm going to put it back on my own meter, my own checker. By the way, I would have used my own checker to check the ohms, but my own checker doesn't work. So, how many ohms could an ohm checker check if an ohm checker could check ohms? <laughs> okay, so I want to twist up one end of the cotton a little bit. Enough that I can stick it through there and pull it through. And you don't want much resistance here. You want enough to fill up the coil, but you don't want it bunching up on the sides. So that's good. Again, take a little bit and twist it up. Okay. Now these wicks are going to. Uh, Unlike the K-Fun, the wicks on the Aqua actually fit into the uh, juice veins, the slots for the juice. So I'm going to go ahead and get a guesstimation of how long they need to be and go ahead and cut them off. Hope you're enjoying the music. I played this on another video. Uh, it's all written and composed and performed by a good friend of mine, uh, T-Bone, and his uh, the name of his uh, music production is Zoetic Rhythm. So you want to wet it, the wick with some juice. This helps uh, stick the wick. You know when you when you push it into the uh, the juice slots, it'll stay there, and that's why you're, that's why I'm putting juice on it right now. Get it good and saturated. You can take a paper clip or a small screwdriver or what have you. And you just push it into that slot there. A 
Okay, you want to keep the cotton, the uh, chimney threads, onto this base right here. So you're going to want to not use too much cotton so that you'll be able to get that chimney screwed on there. See, I got a little excess juice flowing around here. And bird's eye view, like I said, you'll want this cotton, you don't want it bulging out from uh, outside of these threads because when you go to screw your chimney on, it'll, uh, it'll mess it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'll go ahead and wipe some juice off of this. I'll go ahead and put this on the mod and uh, test fire it just to make sure it's still working like it was working when I tested it. That looks pretty good. So everything's a go there. One of these days I'll buy a camera that uh, I won't have to keep switching and I'll have a better view. Alright, so now we got our wick in there, got our co uh, coils and wicks, now we're going to put the chimney chamber and thread it on there. It should go on there nice and easy, tighten it up, okay. You see, uh, see some of the cotton on the holes right here on the, in the channels. Okay, next thing we're going to do is put our tank body on. And look at your air holes. I like mine wide open. I like the air holes wide open. So I'm going to uh, just thread the tank on until the uh, bottom lip of the tank meets the top of the uh, two air holes. Okay, to fill this up, now I've heard that some people have had problems filling them up. I hadn't had any problems, but this is the way I do it. I put the tank on, then I fill the juice well, the tank up, to the bottom of the threads that the top threads into. Once that's, I've got it filled up to that level, I put the top on. Thread it down slightly till the O-ring starts to connect and turn it upside down and hold on to the tank so it doesn't spin and continue to turn the uh, top of the uh, tank and what that'll do is relieve the negative pressure that you might get in the tank and then uh, when that happens it'll flow through the air holes okay so that's it uh, I'm gonna do another video and if you'll watch the video, let me see, where am I pointing to? Right at the top corner here. There's a link to another video that I'll show the vapor production off of this build. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the build or about any other uh, atomizers or whatever with, uh, using cotton, please visit Obsessive Cotton Disorder on Facebook. Join the group. You can get in touch with me there, uh, ask any questions or what have you. It's community driven. 
we'd be glad to have you over there participating in the group. And again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, like I said, uh, ask them in the uh, comments below or either come to uh, Obsessive Cotton Disorder and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Y'all have a good day. Vape on and vape strong. See you later.